Check the description for the following discount codes. In the comments of my first video where I was testing DLSS in wrench and into the radius, we, we obviously saw quite poor performance increases, even on the ultra performance settings in DLSS, which was quite disappointing to see. Now in the comments, quite a few people said they've been using it in No Man's Sky and they actually see much better results. Now No Man's Sky was the only game, the only game, the only game <laughs> that I hadn't actually tested because I didn't have it installed. So I thought, well, this is interesting. Let's get it down, let's get it installed and let's have a little play around with that. So that's what I've done here today. And also, people were saying they've seen better results in Wired Link with the Oculus Quest 2, this is, versus Air Link or Virtual Desktop. And there were some other comments about Virtual Desktop having overhead and you know other things like this. Now, I had tested it using both Link and Air Link and thirdly, Virtual Desktop. And I was just really using Virtual Desktop because it has a, an easy overlay you know, built into it to show the, the frame rate changes. Now, in my testing with the previous two titles, I didn't really see much of a difference between Link, Air Link, or Virtual Desktop. But in No Man's Sky, we are seeing some smaller differences. They're not massive, but there's some. So what I'm gonna do is roll the footage, my screen capture, and you'll see me, uh, in fact, I'll just, I'll just roll it and talk as it's as it's playing and you'll see exactly what's going on so the first one is link wired link and as you can see we're around 30 fps here and this is with obviously dlss off um, my render resolution set to maximum and we're capped at 120 fps so there's plenty of overhead there for it to go up should um, should it be able to when we enable DLSS. So this is what we're gonna do now. Um, we're gonna do ultra performance. So this is the most performance we'll gain. And what a weird anomaly here, when you actually apply this, the frame rate absolutely tanks, like you can see here, for a few seconds whilst it seems to sort itself out. And it does this every single time I change. But there we go, we're up to sort of low 60s, you know, 60 to 63. FPS. So that is, you know, a 100% increase. Obviously, at this setting, the visuals are absolutely awful. Um, everything looks a blurry mess because it really is being rendered at a very low resolution. But unlike the previous testing, it actually works, which is good. So then we flick over to uh, quality, or what do I choose balance? Quality, yeah, quality first. Um, this obviously gives a much better visual experience, um, but at the cost of about, I don't know, what, what are we seeing here? Probably a drop of 20, 20 to 25 FPS, something like that. So, you know, because we're nearer that native render resolution, it's gonna be the case, you know? And then if we go and play around and use balanced and some of the other ones, you, you'll see the frame rate varies in between just like we'd expect. And obviously the visuals vary, you know, accordingly as well. Again, it absolutely tanks. Look, when you change the setting, don't know why that is, but it just does. Um, but yeah, that's what we expect to see using DLSS, you know, a varying boost in performance based on just how low we render it and how much upscaling is applied. Uh, again, for me, the drop in visual quality you know, to gain the real performance is far too much. So that was Link. Now we'll flick over to Air Link here. This, uh, with, with, this is with DLSS off, really struggling here to maintain even a solid frame rate, even though it's poor. But again, we're around 30 FPS, just the same as with, with Link when it eventually settles down. Um, so no, no change there. When we then go into the options, and enable DLSS. We're gonna go straight for ultra performance, of course, to see um, how that's gonna jump up in a absolute performance-based scenario where you don't care about visuals. Again, frame rate tanks, just like it does when we change it using the wide link, but a much more jerky experience here. Um, and once it creeps up, we're hovering around 60 FPS. I would say we're three to five FPS lower than using wide link but not really much 
to speak of. And again, you wouldn't use it like this. You wouldn't um, have your render resolution so high so that you, know, that you can only hold 60 FPS using DLSS. That would just be silly. Um, but what I'm doing here is giving myself maximum overhead and allowing DLSS to really shine through and, and show what it can do. But again, that was a you know that was a 100% FPS increase there. And again, as we go to quality and to, and to uh, balanced, you'll see it vary in between, just like we'd expect. And again, the visuals vary accordingly. And the visuals between Wired Link and Air Link, there's not really a whole lot in it. Um, if you've got a decent um, router and a solid connection, and you put your streaming bitrate up, you know, to a high enough setting. So this is all working much, much better than what it did in Into the Radius and with Wrench, where I only saw maybe like a five to eight sort of FPS increase. Uh, again, for me, not a big fan of the trade-off with the visuals, but each to their own. And my, my hardware setup is an RTX 2080, I have a 32 gig of RAM and a AMD 3800X. So that's where we're at here. Um, next thing we'll do, we'll, we'll finally pop into virtual desktop just for a comparison. And this gives us some slightly interesting results. So virtual desktop holds a higher FPS rendering natively. So about 40 rather than 30. And it's much, much smoother than what Air Link was. Uh, and even a little bit more so than Wired Link, which is really interesting. Um, but weirdly, when we then go, in fact, we even got 50 odd FPS looking up at the sky there. When we then enable DLSS, and previously it jumped from 30 to 60 using Air Link and Wired Link, when we do it here, we only go from 40 FPS, give or take. Again, we do get this little tank here where it tanks to 15 or so. Once it settles down, we only get up to round about 50 to 55 FPS. So there is a small amount of overhead, it seems, using virtual desktop versus Air Link or, or Wired Link. In fact, even Air Link had a, you know, a slight drop in frame rate compared to Wired Link. So the, the over-the-air solutions definitely seem to have a little bit more overhead. But yeah, 50 to 55 FPS is the best we see here in virtual desktop. But the, as I say, with it rendering natively, we we're around 40, which is you know 25% higher than rendering natively using Link or Air Link, which is really quite interesting. Here, obviously, I'm just going through you know balanced and, um, and quality just so you can see the difference we get. So that was some quite interesting results there. And when I say rendering natively, um, in the Oculus Control Panel, we are at 1.7x, and in Virtual Desktop, we are on Ultra. And they are within a few pixels of each other from a rendering resolution point of view. So it is a fair back-to-back -back test. And here I just went back to, to Native again, just, um, just to confirm you know, the results of, of hovering around 40 FPS there. Um, but yeah, that really, is that really is my experience you know with dlss definitely working so much better or implemented so much better here in no man's sky than it was in uh, wrench or into the radius and even though virtual desktop doesn't see the the perfor on performance you don't get quite as higher fps we don't seem to have as low a low which is an interesting result it's like it's almost like it's using more performance at the higher end but less with dlss off which i, I don't know weird a weird uh, a weird experience and i you know I, I tested these all quite a few times to make sure it wasn't just a one-off anomaly i restarted the pc restarted the quest you know made sure nothing else was running so it was a fair sort of uh, fair back-to-back -back testing as much as as anything can be. But yeah, interesting to see what's going on here. My conclusion is still the same, which is I personally would rather render at a lower resolution in the first place than um, use DLSS where you render really low and then massively upscale. I think I'd still rather just drop the render resolution in the Oculus software 
or in virtual desktop and do it that way because DLSS comes with its own overhead as well. And if you just render at a slightly lower resolution in the first place, then you don't have that overhead in play. But yeah, I thought this little follow-up video would be quite interesting after some of you said you'd had good experience in No Man's Sky uh, and also comparing wired link to air link to virtual desktop. Obviously, I don't have a wired headset here anymore to try in that. So what we are using here is all being rendered on the PC and then compressed into a video stream and sent either via the USB cable or over the air to the headset. If you're using a hardwired headset, you may see slightly better figures there because there's no video encoding or streaming going on, albeit that is done on a dedicated chip on the GPU, so it doesn't really add any overhead to speak of. But yeah, as always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy. Thank you.